I get real frustrated sometimes by people who throw out their credentials as being conservatives or liberals or whatever the hell you want to call them. Saying, well, well, it's really a, a conservative position to argue this or a liberal position to argue this. And, and, and they're talking about current events. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, a policy issue. I'm talking about current events. And <laughs> I think yesterday I, I exhibited that with, with the liberal Sam Cedar, whose idiotic take on, you know, a Dave Rubin video, uh, you know, it, it pretty much set me off. Now, you know, Sam Cedar, you know, if, if you really look at his behavior, it's, it's illiberal. It's, it's, that's, that's like the real term for it. Um, you know, being, being liberal in the <coughs> traditional sense, but people call it classical liberal, whatever you want to say, uh, it, it really meant that you were an open-minded person and that you could tolerate differences and, and, and could, could uh, be receptive to new ideas. And, and being conservative meant that uh, you, you wanted to preserve uh, whatever was good and just with the system that you had already had. Okay? Now, um, in, in, it's not as if everything is in conflict between both of those views. There are certain things that liberals, <coughs> you know, liberals and conservatives have in common. And, and that's where this current political polarization, um, it, it's, it's drawn people away because the, I see it now that there are people who are, um, uh, they're, I would call them skeptics or, <coughs> you know, inquisitives people inquisitive people, and then there are people who are uh, just, um, you know, isolated. They, they're they're closed-minded. They don't want to accept that the truth could be other than what they've been told for a long time. Uh, you know, I don't know what the term would be for that. Uh, pro probably the deaf, if you really want to think about it. The deaf, blind, and dumb. That's the other people. And you could be a progressive and be in either one of those camps. You could be a conservative and be in either one of those camps. And one of the people that really pisses me off when I hear him talking, uh, you know, I'll, I'll turn his, his show on once in a while on the way home from work, uh, is uh, Michael Medved, who is basically the David Pakman of the right. <laughs> and I hate, I, yeah, I keep using David Pakman as, you know, <coughs> the, the person to... <coughs> You know, describe people, you know, with relation, with respect to him, with relation to him. I think he's he's an awful host, and he, but it's the same idea. Uh, Michael Medved, um, over the past few weeks, has been a complete and utter joke of a person, even more than usual. And he's actually coming here to Ohio, I think, at the beginning of next month. And I had a mind to go there and. <coughs> ask him some pointed questions, <coughs> hopefully in a civil manner, but um, I don't know if that's a good idea because he, he just maddens me. And I'll tell you two reasons. Now, the reason today was that Medved was trying to make the case that uh, DACA recipients don't get, or D DACA people, D DACA program participants, I don't know what to call them, uh, dreamers, they, they don't they don't get any special treatment anywhere. And he was saying this to a caller who was in Anaheim and who said that at her school, it was clear and it was known that DACA recipients and their families were getting special treatment on all manner of different things. Now, for Medved to deny this is ridiculous. First of all, they, of course, have to receive special treatment because they have to take ESL classes, English as a second language. Those people who've just arrived here from uh, other countries, whether, and, and, you know, I'm not just talking about Latin America, it's possible, and, and it's known that there are dreamers from, from other parts of the, of the world. I think South Asia, for example, has some, uh, Korea, I'm not sure why, you know, but it happens. Not all of them are from Latin America. And you have English as a second language. You, you, you do have them uh, drawing benefits, not maybe not welfare, but other benefits. So, Instead of admitting an obvious truth, he dug in his heels and pretended that this woman who had called in was some sort of bigoted, uh, you know, 
<laughs> she was some sort of bigoted clans woman. Well, the woman was Mexican. She was Mexican-American. Okay, she, she was a naturalized Mexican-American. <laughs> okay, uh, what the hell? Uh, you want to be the conscience of conservatism, just like all these idiots like Max Boot and um, David Frum, these morons that never believed in any sort of limited government policy to begin with. Now, now you're going to go and, and shill for DACA, which is uh, a program that, that was a complete disgrace. Uh, no, you, you don't represent, you, you represent just failure. That, that's what Michael Medved means to, to people like me that, that, that are looking at these issues. And, and we can accept that what some people are talking about from their daily experiences is not being properly reported uh, in either the media or anywhere else. So that was this week. Now, last week, he said something that pissed me off even worse. And that was that, you know, th there shouldn't be all of this skepticism about the investigation, the Mueller investigation and the FBI and this distrust. And he said that the reason that there shouldn't be distrust is because <coughs> the country would go into convulsions. He was also saying that, that, that liberals shouldn't hope for impeachment because impeachment is a very painful process for the country and that they, they've forgotten how Watergate was and how the country was very divided and there was a, a bad mood in the country. Uh, but, but that's the same tack he takes with the FBI. And he also said that he was downplaying the importance of release the memo. You know, this was Friday. He was saying, you know, release the memo is ridiculous. There's there's too many. It's it's pointless to believe that the FBI was anything less than a professional in its conduct of the investigation. Look, this is the this is the type of stuff professed by a person who is fine with being a tool of uh, you know a, a regime that violates basic. Uh, constitutional rights. That, that's the type of person that Michael Medved is, if, if that's the type of rhetoric he has. And, and, and he, you know, even if he's in denial or even if he's ignorant of what's actually going on, it, it's still the wrong attitude to take. And again, I don't care if you're a conservative or a progressive. There are plenty of progressives that are, are very aware and, and very, um, I would say, uh, <laughs> displeased with what's going on with the Mueller investigation. You know, there's H.A. Goodman, whose who's sh show I watch pretty often. Uh, I wouldn't call it a show. It's more like these videos. Uh, and some of them are, are a bit annoying, but uh, very informative. And, <coughs> you know, Tim Black, another another good progressive creator. Um, and then on the conservative side, of course, there's Cernovich, and there's, there's uh, Alex Jones. And there, there's plenty of people of all political opinions that can agree that when you have a federal agency that's charged with law enforcement uh, openly flouting legal procedures and evidence keeping procedures and record keeping procedures and and uh, basic prosecutorial uh, protocols in order to uh, pursue a target, uh, no, that, that's not something we should take lightly. We, we should be urging them to release the memo. Uh, we're hearing more and more about these text messages with the secret society. I think Medved did mention that today in passing. But but this is somebody, he's, he's perfectly fine with the government, uh, you know, perpetrating this type of crap. And he, he said before, you know, people should, should stop demonizing Hillary Clinton or demonizing Barack Obama because it's divisive to the country. Well, well that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, what's divisive for the country is when you have... Uh, government officials that use their office to pursue and prosecute people uh, based on their political beliefs or for their own personal motives. Okay, that's what the, that's what's divisive for the country. Not revealing those things. That's not divisive. Uh, another another problem I see with it, and and you know going along the song, the same track of, of you know just these um, these views that he's been expressing. The, the problem that I have with it, and, and you know, again, it's freedom of speech. He's on the radio. Uh, it's not my job to tell him what to say. I'm not, the FCC tells him not to curse. If, if I had my way, he could curse all the fuck he wants, even though he's one of those, uh, you know, goody two shoes guys who, who doesn't say a curse word. Probably, you know, when he farts, he, he thinks that, uh, you know, raspberry perfume is coming out of his ass or something. 
But, you know, Michael Medved is one of these people who thinks that, uh, you know, based on his study of history, that basically, um, you know, there's there's trends in, in society and <laughs> there's a historical, <coughs> excuse me, there's a historical arc going on and that everything is, is based on, on karma or some sort of, uh, of hand of, of destiny or something. Uh, great. Good. But it doesn't work the way he's talking about. It doesn't, it doesn't work by sitting back and saying, oh, oh, let's trust the system to fix itself. No, that, that's, that's a totally, totally uh, ostrich-like approach to the world. And, and, you, and you can hear it in his broadcast, and it's, it's, it's just unbelievably maddening when I hear somebody like him all the time pretending that I, I'm the, you know, he, he's always talking about, I remember before the election, he said, uh, I, I can't, I, I just hope that Donald Trump doesn't ruin my party um, like I think he will. Well, none of us, the people who voted for Donald Trump, give a fuck about your shitty party, Michael Medved. We, we voted for people, and I didn't vote just for Donald Trump. I, I voted for other people, and we, we voted for them based on our desire for them to fulfill the platform that we support. Okay, we don't give a fuck about your shitty Republican Party that just takes donations and uses them for, you know, hookers and blow at little conventions all over the country, uh, you know, every four years. We don't give a fuck about the party. So far as I care, you know, both parties can suck it. And so can you.